For our next lesson, we will review environmental injury and illness, which includes a variety of conditions that frequently require first aid care. Insect bites and stings are a common and often annoying occurrence. Be alert in any signs or symptoms or severe allergic reactions, as this must prompt immediate 911 notification. Remove the bee stingers if visible by scraping it away. Wash the area with cold water and apply ice. Stay with the person for at least 30 minutes, as some allergic reactions can be delayed in onset. Signs and symptoms of a severe reaction include nausea, vomiting, severe pain at sight, abdominal pain, difficulty breathing, muscle rigidity, headache, and decreased responsiveness. A black widow spider bite is known to cause severe abdominal pain in children that can mimic appendicitis. Ticks carry a variety of diseases, and one must be vigilant for signs and symptoms for up to one month after exposure. Signs of a tick-borne illness include fever, headache, joint pain, and skin rash. To detach the tick, grasp it by the head with tweezers and pull it straight out. Be sure to clean the area with soap or alcohol. Other animal bites, such as raccoon, bat, skunk, fox, or coyote bites, carry the highest risk of rabies. Always be sure the scene is safe when giving first aid to any animal bite victim. Contact the emergency response system, as an animal control officer may be able to capture the animal and determine the risk of rabies. Clean the bite with soap and water and control bleeding by applying direct pressure. Snake bites require medical attention. If pain is getting worse, swelling occurs, bruising develops, or systematic signs such as nausea or vomiting develop, a poisonous snake bite has occurred. Call 911 and do not delay medical attention after making sure the scene is safe. Keep the person calm. Avoid moving extremities. Remove constricting clothing and jewelry and gently wash with soap and water. Heat-related illness can occur due to extremes of temperatures, particularly in the elderly and during vigorous exercise. Illnesses include heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. Heat cramps cause painful muscle spasms of the extremities, sweating, and headaches. Resolve symptoms by resting, cooling off, and drinking water. Light stretching and massage can also help. Heat exhaustion is more serious, and signs include dizziness, vomiting, muscle cramps, fatigue, increased sweating, and lightheadedness. Move the person immediately to a cooler environment. Have the victim lie down and remove as much clothing as possible. Spray with cool water or use a wet cloth and a fan if available, and encourage them to drink water or a sports drink. Heat stroke is life-threatening, and immediate action is required. Signs and symptoms of a heat stroke include confusion, loss of consciousness, dizziness, muscle cramps, vomiting, and seizures. Call 911 immediately. Take the following actions when treating a victim with heat stroke. Assess the scene safety, wear protective equipment, and obtain a first aid kit and AED. Use a spray bottle with cold water and fan if available. If the victim is able, Encourage them to drink water, a sports drink, or electrolyte solution. Continue to cool the victim until his or her behavior returns to normal or advanced help arrives. Exposure to the UV radiation from sunlight can result in sunburn. Sunburn can be minor or result in blistering and sloughing of the skin. Avoidance of additional sun exposure is key. Encourage hydration and drinking of extra fluids. Topical aloe vera can provide symptomatic relief. If not allergic, ibuprofen can also alleviate some discomfort. Exposure to the cold can result in frostbite and is most common in extremities such as fingers, ears, nose, and toes. Wind chill increases the risk of frostbite. In severe frostbite cases, ice crystals form in tissues and destroy cells, causing permanent damage. The skin will appear waxy and white or yellow-gray. The area will be cold and numb, and may feel like a block of wood. 
The tissue will be firm and will not move or compress easily when squeezed. Take the following actions to provide first aid for frostbite. Get the person to a warm place. Call 911 immediately. Remove any constricting clothing and all jewelry from the affected body part. Remove all wet clothing. Redress in dry warm clothing and cover with a heavy blanket. The frostbitten extremity should be rapidly rewarmed in hot water that is about 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Hypothermia is a potentially life-threatening condition when the body temperature falls dangerously low. Hypothermia can develop even in non-freezing temperatures. Signs and symptoms include behavior change, paradoxical undressing, shivering, muscle stiffness, cold skin, and decreased respiratory effort. Rapid action is required to care for a hypothermia victim. Call 911 immediately and perform the following actions. Remove the person from the cold and get them into a warm environment. Remove any wet clothing and dry the person. Redress in dry, warm clothing and cover with a blanket. Cover the head as this is a source of significant heat loss. Be prepared to perform CPR. Stay with the victim until advanced help arrives. The list of toxins and potential poison exposures is extensive and beyond the scope of this resource. Some basic concepts will be presented here that are universally applicable for first aid providers. A material safety data sheet is required to be available where chemicals are in use in businesses and institutions. The sheets provide information about the composition of various chemicals and is useful when contacting poison control. Follow these actions when caring for a victim with poison exposure. Call 911. Ensure the scene is safe and wear protective equipment. Get the first aid kit and AED. Tell the dispatcher the chemicals involved if possible. Remove the victim from the toxin or poison if possible. Remove saturated clothing. Follow any recommendations from the 911 dispatcher or MSDS sheet. Stay with the victims until advanced help arrives. If CPR is required, ensure a mask is used if possible. That concludes the environmental injuries lesson.